Hello everybody, my name's Nathan. I decided to uh, film myself today. I've got my trusty camera right there. Got my trusty gaming headphones right here because this is the only microphone I own that's halfway decent. So today I'd like to wish a happy movie birthday to one of the most criminally underrated James Bond movies made. The Living Daylights, which turns 30 years old today, was released in the U.S. on July 31st, 1987. Living Daylights was directed by John Glenn, who's worked on a bunch of Bond films. Stars Timothy Dalton as 007. M Miriam? M Myram? Diado? 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 Jer... Jer... Oh, screw this. The Dude from the Fugitive. Mitchell, Gimli Son of Gloin, The Sweater-Wearing Guy from Die Hard, True Lies Terrorist, Jack's Dad from Lost, and of course, Q. Now this was Timothy Dalton's first of only two movies playing James Bond. He kind of got uh, sandwiched in and forgotten between the more revered Bonds, which is too bad because I really like Timothy Dalton, not just because he's a great actor. It wasn't lies, Jim. It was acting. But he was pretty damn good as Bond and never really got the respect he deserved, kind of like the movie as a whole. Now, fun fact, Timothy Dalton was actually considered to play Bond uh, years earlier, but was thought to be too young at the time. And when the producers were making Living Daylights, they considered Pierce Brosnan to play James Bond, but he couldn't do it because uh, of the TV show he was doing at the time. So it's fun to kind of see these casting decisions come around full circle. Now, it's not perfect, the movie does kind of slog along at a few times, and the Afghanistan-based subplot is certainly uh, a Cold War-era set piece of its time that I'm sure the producers would never touch nowadays. The producers were moving away from the more tongue-in-cheek cheesiness of the Roger Moore films that kinda got out of control in those regards. And a lot of people think m they may be overcompensated for that and got too dark with License to Kill. But that's another conversation for another day. Switch the bloody machine off! But I think Living Daylight strikes a really good balance. It's got everything you could possibly want in a Bond movie. Great action and stunt work some classic spy espionage, a Bond that's charming as f Bond, James Bond. Exercise control 007 here. I'll report in an hour. Won't you join me? Better make that too. Awesome gadgets. Something we're making for the Americans called a ghetto blaster. Very enjoyable opening theme and credit sequence. A smoking hot leading lady. And a kick-ass Bond car that's featured in what I consider one of the best car chases in the franchise. What is this? I've had a few optional extras installed. And let's not forget the most important and my personal favorite aspect of what makes a great Bond film. Cornball, face-in-your-palm, one-liner puns delivered usually, but not always, at the expense of someone's death. Now, this has been one of my favorite Bond films since I was a kid, and it's a shame that it never really reached that level of Bond reverence that it so justly deserves. So, today, I wish you, The Living Daylights, a happy 30th birthday, 
a toast with a vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. Hey,